And here comes Daniel Norris to pitch the third inning is a phrase nobody ever wants to hear. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Swing for the fences on sleeper picks, and you could win a hundred times your money. Download the sleeper app, use the promo code Locked On, and you'll get a hundred dollars up to hundred dollars match in your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers' terms of use for details. Now, I also want to take a moment before we get into the meat of this and thank you to Haskell K uh, for leaving an iTunes review. Uh, my one comment about runners in scoring position is it tends to be an up and down stat year to year. I wouldn't stress too much on it. I do think Jose is having a down year, but I do want to thank you for that tweet because it made me go and look up Jose a little bit more in depth and find out that him and my daughter share a birthday. So that's kind of fun uh, as I wear my Jose Ramirez jersey on the show today. Extra reason to like J-Ram if you didn't need, uh, not like you need more reasons to, to love J-Ram, right? That's just one of those things. Ah, you beat me to it. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, yeah, we have the, the fun clip of him. I think that was uh, after Ramon Laureano's homer, I think, their day in Toronto. I can't remember whose home run that was. Yes. The man with new representation. Ramon That's Laureano. right. I, I don't know I don't know who the agent is. I saw you know who I saw the tweet from, which is funny now who I saw the the news from was Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells broke that news to me. I don't know what what Vernon Wells has to do with it, but uh I don't know, I don't know if that really changes anything. Maybe maybe Lor- I mean Laureano is playing pretty well recently. He had a good weekend in Toronto and he uh, is two for three. Uh, just for people who might be listening, we are recording this in the bottom of seventh because we could not wait any longer to, to hit record because of life. And yeah. uh, this game has yeah. already taken. I got to wake up early life. in the morning, people. And it's and you know it's already nine my time, early. ten your time. And listen, it we got fun. We have fun things. We have fun and not so fun things. Honestly, the first thing's going to be not so fun. Uh, yeah. But this was an interesting game. I was talking to Justin before the game. It's interesting how these two team offenses are so diametrically different. And the annoyance to me is I wish the twins were in another division just because we we're talking before, like Trevor Larnick can't find a spot on this team. He's got a 96 way to runs created plus he's down in triple a Alex Kirilov. Sure. He can't. I mean, this whole twins team can't stay healthy, but it's like, this is the team with, this is the one team in baseball that has more outfield depth than they know what to do with. We saw Matt Walner, who is a big fan. I mean, I, in one of my way too early mocks, I had him going in the top 10 of the draft. Uh, then he had his health issues. So it's an interesting team. Uh, we'll get into this game, but let's, let's talk about some, you know, multiple passing away of former players and managers. That's, yeah. Today was the, today the guardians had announced that uh, former Cleveland manager, Pat Corrales passed away at the age of, I think 82. That was sad to see. And then uh, we, First and the Mexican American yeah. manager in baseball history. He was the first yeah. one, and he was given and some. Yes, his time in Cleveland was. Yes, he was with Cleveland uh, from '83 to '87. But here's the thing: that '87 team then Joe led Carter, to the '88 Corey draft, Snyder, yeah. which is the well, no, it's the '88 draft was the single greatest draft in franchise history. The weird thing with him is. Uh, during that run, he had two years where they were just awful, where they ended up with the number two pick in the draft. The year in between those two picks, they took Greg Swindell and Mark Lewis. The guy in between, if they had been the worst team that other year, Ken Griffey Jr. Oof. Tank. Tank. You never know. Just tank. Thank you, Daniel Norris. Which, is, which you know, is also the uh, the funny bit to me is like, the year before that, the number one high school player taken Kent Marker out of Dublin. So it's, uh, you know, it's probably the only time back to back years, Ohio produced the top prep talent in the draft. Jeez, Words we yeah, will never say been. again is, uh, I mean, we had uh, Colt Emerson go in the first round this year, which is the first time since like. Who was the infielder? The, the guy, the guy everybody wanted the one year he played for the Reds and was uh, on fire for a hot minute, but he's he flamed out pretty quick. I can't think of it in the top of my head. Mm. The left-handed I mean, hitting I, infielder. I'm blanking. Matt Smorrell was kind of, but he was a comp, oh, yeah. like comp first-round pick. You had to go back to, and I can't remember who it was before then. 
So yeah, RIP. Tim Costo. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, Pat Krause, the biggest thing to me is, you know, and he was also like a central part of those great Braves teams. Like he was the bench coach, I believe, for Bobby Cox when Cleveland, you know, lost to them. So he got his home pit of revenge years down the line. But first Mexican American manager in baseball history. That's that's huge. Uh, and then from a we missed a few uh, before uh, Dick Tomanek, who was a local lefty who had some control issues, you know, played five years in the big leagues, probably most well known for it was uh, Tomanek, who was traded with Roger Maris for Woody Held and uh, Vic Power. I've talked about how Woody Held was my dad's favorite player. So he and, and underrated guy, you, you pointed out that he held the all time shortstop home run record till Johnny Peralta broke that in, you know, a much different era, like 70 years later. Uh, again, it's hard when you trade Roger Maris. His, his five-year run after he left was utterly fantastic. Of course, you know, the home run year, but Dick Tominick passing. And then Alex Cole was better than I remembered when I went and looked at his OPS plus relative stats. And I know he's only here three years, man. The goggles made him just a part of my childhood. Like he was one of those guys. He played in 90, 91 and 92. And, you know, that 91 year, 740 OPS, like he is a guy who played in the wrong era. Like he walked more than he struck out that year. He was a guy who walked at a good rate. Uh, he might be more valuable now for that ability. A 386 on base percentage that year, 379 the year before that. Yeah, he had no power at all. He, he had five home runs in his entire career, but finished ninth in the rookie of the year in 90. Uh, yeah, a guy who's maybe more valuable than he got credit for. Might have been better for than Wayne Kirby if he had been given that full opportunity. I know he wasn't great in 92, but I don't know. I thought he debuted earlier and played longer, but uh, very sad to see as he's only 58 years of age. Yeah, I, I don't really have a whole lot of um, memories of Alex Cole, a little before my time, but I do remember the stories about moving the fences in for him uh, because of his speed and all the things he could do. So that was always interesting to me. And um, I, don't have I would take him right now on this thing. team. Alex Cole. Yes. Guy for 390 on of... base percentage. Derek Dietrich, by the way, is the guy we were thinking of. Derek Dietrich. He was a first rounder. He was a high school he kid. Did he, he go to college? I think he was the highest pick to come out of Ohio until Colt Emerson. He was the last first round pick out of Ohio, but he, okay. he ended up, no, he was a third rounder Dietrich. And then a second rounder, he went to Georgia tech. Okay. I don't know. Derek Dietrich was love for some reason is coming to mind. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, uh, we'll helped was interesting on. to me on that trade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just remember Pat Krauss not get, getting, I'm mean, obviously that was before my time too, but I know he didn't get a whole lot of, so he, Pat Krauss was the manager the year of the, was it 86? The one year where they, everyone, it kind of broke out. Everyone had the, the, the SI curse was 87, right? Ye the SI cover curse was 87. I th I th yeah. And that would I have been Pat Krause's last year's manager, I think, right? Yeah, and then he just, they were terrible. Well, yeah, because uh, everyone had them winning the division. And he got fired in the middle playoffs. of the year. Yeah, because I think 87 was the year everybody had them being the breakout team. They were on the SI cover, I think, and then obviously it didn't go well. I just well, remember a classmate Pat. of mine bringing it up into class and – like it was such a big deal. And I'm trying to remember what year that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it, was, it was, you're right. It was 87. Not bad for not being born for another two years. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was six. So that, that was someone who probably brought it in when I was in kindergarten or first grade. So it, it's not my fault. I can't really remember it super well, but my memory, my um, memory was really good from that year, obviously. And negative two. Yeah. Too. No, but yeah, this is like I said. It, we wish them all well. It's it's very sad to see and all these. I mean, Dick Tomanek was ninety two. That's a really good run. Um, Pat Corrales was eighty two. That's still a strong run. Uh, I feel the worst for Alex Cole, who was not even sixty yet. That's way too young. And I believe I don't know if he died. I don't know if he passed away on his birthday. But I, the news came from the Guardians on what would have been his birthday. So he did pass away like right before his. Uh, his birthday this year, it seems like. So that's even more disappointing. Just br bring it, bringing us all down. Th thanks so much. Oh, Chad Billingsley was the last guy. That's who it was. Chad Billingsley. Uh, one, of the one of the defiance guys. They, yeah. I, I knew it was. 
Defiance had like a run there in in, in, in Ohio uh, baseball there. All right, well, this game's moving along. The bats made so is this podcast. Questions. The podcast is moving along. The, the game's moving along slowly but surely. I still have years off my life from this pod from this from the podcast and this game. Uh, bats made it through customs. The pitching, not so much. So we're going to talk about that here coming up on Lockdown Guardians. Want the chance to win more money with less picks? Head to Sleeper, the number one sports app where you can win 100 times your money on just two or more fancy baseball picks. Do you think Jose Ramirez can slam a home run tomorrow night against the Blue Jays? Maybe he's been on a hot stretch of late on Sleeper. I hope not because they're playing the Twins. (laughs) Twins, that's right. Blue Blue Jays are over the weekend. I'm I'm fried right now. Uh, (laughs) What we sure do, and I'll see if you can swing for the fences with a hundred times payout. Well, I'll tell you what, he will he did slam some home runs against the Blue Jays. Maybe that's why it's on my mind. All you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on stat stat categories. That's a hard word to say. Like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get the picks right and you could win big. Uh they have dynamic payouts which are live, which is in short, each player projection has a multiplier attached to it for a chance to win more. Use the promo code locked on and you can get a, up to a hundred dollar match in your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Don't sleep on Sleeper. Uh, don't sleep on game two of this series with the Twins and the Guardians at 740. Local time in, in Ohio. Uh, Gavin Williams versus Jorge Lopez. That should be an interesting game. If you cannot tune in on your TV set, you can listen to it the old, no, not really the old fashioned way. You can listen to it on XM radio, Sirius XM, Search Guardians on the app. Uh, another good offensive game that makes you feel good. Everybody, I mean, Gabby Arias had two doubles. Yeah, one Those of them were both hard hit balls. That first one, yeah, I think and, he thought it was out. Yeah, that was not a great look that he, he, no. uh, you he, know, he gazed a little too long, but you know, he still got the second because he's got some wheels, but I know, both hits over 100 better. miles an hour. The second one was. Down the line, it was a it was negative the yeah. negative launch angle. But you know what? He's hitting the ball hard. He's putting in good spots. And now he's he hits the ball the opposite day. field. Yeah. yeah. And now he's he's and okay. If we go back to May, remember when he played every day and he was arguably their, their most productive hitter outside of Jose? Like he had that really good stretch, and then he fell out of rotation. Like he and this this goes back to yesterday's conversation. The bench needs to be not the young guys, but the vets going mm-hmm. forward. We need to let sprinkle them in. Yeah, we need to let these young kids marinate. We need to see what we have. And I mean, Gabby Arias is doing some things. I mean, I know the comments hate him. We we get a lot of negative comments on him. But it, after a game like today, you, you can't be hating on Gabby because you know you're going to get an elite level defender. Plus, I mean, he's got power. Like, I had someone else in the comments. I wish I could remember which every day. Maybe it was uh, which every day in the comments. I'm not sure if it might maybe Steven. Uh, okay, but talking about like if you have Jose, you have Naylor, you have Bo Naylor, and you have Arias, is there a chance all four of them could hit 20 home runs next year? It's like there's a world where yes. that happens, yeah. And I think like that changes the game significantly for this team. Uh, for a team that struggled to hit 100 home runs this year, we're talking about four guys getting to 80. Uh, that, that's a good potential starting point, and that's not I mean, even adding yeah. in Kyle Manzardo, who could be another potential 20 home run guy. Correct. Gabby has a 20, almost a 28% strikeout rate against right-handers. It's 44 against lefties. Got to figure that out. I, I, I don't, I don't know what to, to make of that, but he's got a good, good number against righties. And obviously if there is for some reason an issue with him against lefties, um, you know, have to figure that out. But yeah, the power is in there. You know, he walks a fair amount, no matter who he's playing against. I mean, he's got a 10% walk rate against both sides of the plate. It's just some weird things to work out. Like you said, there's elite level defense in there. That's a valuable player. You just you need that. That's why he needs to play every day. And like you said, it, if it's not shortstop, then you know a day at first is fine. A day in the outfield is fine. Just get him in the lineup every day. And at this point, I know he's not good against lefties, but he needs to be in there against them just so he can figure out his issues and can get reps. Otherwise, you know, you're never going to find out if he can do it or not before it's too late and he ends up the next. I don't want to say Yandy Diaz, but you know something like that. 
And if, if Rokio is not up here, there's no reason to play anybody else at shortstop. Like Freeman, you can probably put in there one day a week if you move Arias to first base, if you give Cole Calhoun a day off. Although with Josh Naylor coming back, I'm really curious to see how that plays out. Uh, Josh Naylor is going to rehab, I believe, Tuesday night in Akron. That should be a fun series, by the way. <laughs> They're hosting uh, Bowie, so they still have Jackson Holiday for the time being. And we'll see if Jackson Holiday is still there by the end of the week. But uh, that series will start off with Josh Naylor for Akron. and, and uh, He's going to move quicker than, like, Parker Messick. I already has moved quicker than Parker Messick. That's very weird. I to know. Me. I know. It's it's so, <laughs> yeah. The polished lefty in the class, and he's moving slower than the prep shortstop. Well, I mean, and on one hand, Jackson Holiday is an elite talent. Obviously, Parker Messick is a is a left handed Aaron Savali, probably or something. Yeah, but I mean, like again, it's just the level of polish after three years. Like, at four, yeah, really at ACC, this yeah. Is, again, it's me ranting about this stuff uh, like yesterday. That's not what we planned, but it's like they moved by me and everyone else so quickly. We had this stretch of like, boom, boom, boom. And then now it's like, right, we're well, going back to glacial smooth, which again, we talked about is likely that they needed a backfill. It is a backfill issue too. I actually talked to Rob so about that, that last yep. week. I did it. Tell them where they can find it. I'm sure to promote. Uh, I haven't, show. I haven't, I haven't put anywhere. I put, I haven't put anywhere yet. I'm going to be doing okay. an article coming up. So I'll, I'll post the link to that when the article's out. But, um, there was, you know, talk about having backfield opportunities, but I will say for what it's worth, Bybee dominated. He needed to be called up. I mean, Messick yeah. has had, did have, you know, a couple of games where he struck out 10 to 11 and he could have been moved up. I agree. I agree. He can be double A right now, but he hasn't, you know, blown the competition away by the way Bybee did. So there is that, but yeah, it's so weird. So I don't know how this is going to be managed when Naylor comes back. Cause obviously it's, you know, a couple of games and he'll be back. It's only been about a month for him. So it's it's got to be Colhoun stops it, again. I appreciate everything he has done, but he's got to be your bench player. You can't take the at bats away from unless you're taking him from Oscar. Like it can't. Naylor's got to. I would I would send Oscar down in favor of keeping Calhoun at this point. I'm okay. I mean, I'm fine with that. I mean, I just if there if, if there is some intrinsic value that Calhoun is providing for them that that can help any of these guys going the next year, whether it's approach of handling the the day-to-day right yeah he doesn't need to play six days a week and he certainly doesn't need to play against lefties because Naylor and Arias should be your only first baseman most of the week and then if you're lucky maybe we'll see Manzardo sometime in September I don't think it's going to be Friday which is September 1st so I I think that's probably out of the question for the time being I uh wet blanket boo why you gotta be a Dolan's Arias had a nice night Bo Naylor, man, I'll tell you that home run. I, I, Bo Naylor's got good rough power, but that was like power his, his brother has. That home run to center, yeah. 431. I don't think I thought he had that kind of power. Quan had a double, which was nice. Look at that. They didn't, they, you know, they only hit one home run in this game. Yeah. Um, four doubles. Scored, yeah, four doubles. Imagine that. You have extra base hits. You win ball games. Who would have thought? Well, they're not going to win this one, but six well, runs is, is a very good. But they, well, this offense, okay, six runs should have won this game. The Twins, what's funny is the Twins' offense has not been good this year for the most part. I mean, they make the, I mean, obviously the Guardians make the Twins' offense look great, but the Twins are 15th. They're, they're middle of the pack offensively this year at a 104 WRC. Plus. Sounds like the highest. It does. Yeah. The, Guardi- Gar- the Guardians might actually be in first place if their offense produced at a 104 mark with, with the way the pitching has been outside of obviously Monday night's game. But, that's, you, you're right, though. The Twins are the anti anti Guardians. They strike out the most in the league. They have 182, they have 82 home runs more than the Guardians have, which is mind blowing to say, truthfully. Um, that's the other thing too. You're talking about making a trade with the Twins if if it was possible. The uh, the Twins they also do make really bad trades. <laughs> yeah, the Twins do make bad trades. So yeah, maybe that's the team you want to trade with. I don't know. So yeah, bats made it back through. I, I am curious to see this this whole Loriano agent change thing. I'd like to see more about that because he's playing pretty well. And I think you've got to that's the one guy where I'd be like, okay, this is a guy who could realistically be with you because he's got club control and he he does do a couple of things that you could use on next year's ball club. So that's the one guy I don't mind giving a bat to at this point. Although I'd still be sporadic because you have club control over him. He can't go anywhere next year if you don't want him to. And um 
you kind of know who he is, right? You kind of know he hits lefties well. You know he's a good defender. You know he has a great arm. You know he runs pretty well. You don't need to really a good, nice day today again. I mean, he's he, he yeah. might just be streaky. But if you were to call up, you know, even Jonathan Rodriguez, let's say, or you want to put Gabby in right field for the day, but you don't want to sit Will Brennan, say, move him to center or whatever. Like, I would not prioritize Ramon Laureano at bats, even though I find him interesting and I think he can be a useful part of next year's team in a, in a part-time role. I would not prioritize his at bats right now over anybody. Like, if you were to call up Rodriguez or, or just keep Will Brennan in there just to – I don't know for to figure things out because I, I don't know what what good does it do to send Brennan and Gonzalez down. One, I mean, I'd I'd more quickly send Gonzalez down than Brennan, but it's not like Brennan. Brennan's been a little better lately, I suppose, but you still have the defense with him. I don't know. It's, all this is to say, it's pretty obvious that somebody next year needs to be in right field. To the rest of this year needs to prove they deserve the cut the bulk of at bats in right field. I mean, I think um, what this might be is if Gabby Arias establishes himself, then you know you, you then you have the option of seeing what Rokio can Rokio bring you a right fielder. You know, what I, do you do with know. George Valera then? Are you just deciding that George Valera is not part of the team because you've been banking on him for a couple of years? You've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And you're just going to say, "Well, we went out." George Valera. <laughs> If you go out and legitimately, okay, if you legitimately go out and you trade for a right fielder that is already proven in the big leagues, I'm fine with that. But you've got to turn around and move Valera for something else then because you got that's that's when you do the Nolan Jones trade. If you go out and yeah. you move Rokio for an outfielder, that's when you do the Nolan Jones trade. You and you um, trade Valera for a Juan Brito type, but okay, only but, only if you go out and you get a right fielder that has club control with, with good yeah. MLB experience and not not Ron Mariano, but an all star. When I was trying to like interrupt you there, George Valera would have broke his arm trying to interrupt you while talking on a microphone. That's why you can't trust George Valera. George Valera's health record is uh, is he makes Aaron Savali look like an Iron Man. He makes, you know, Zadrunas Agauskas' feet look like they are made out of adamantium. He is this guy has never been healthy. Ever like what's his most like eight? This is eight, with all of his injuries this year. I think this is still going to be his most games he's played in a year because this guy cannot stay healthy. It was like eighty or ninety was the previous high. It's one of those underrated aspects about him for his hype as everyone gets. Sorry, at one hundred and thirty-two yeah. last year, and then before that it was eighty-six. Mm-hmm. And this year he's, yeah, he's got over hundred once. Yeah, he's got over hundred yeah. once. No, I mean you well, can't count on that guy. You you. No way in heck can you have any faith that he is going to stay healthy at this point. Yeah, if you can go out and you can legitimately say that where you're willing to trade one of your shortstops and one of them bring brings back a guy that you have club control over that has proven that they're, they're successful at the major league levels and outfielder, then then you could say, yeah, we can move on from that, I suppose. But we'll see what happens. George Valera might have uh, a new old teammate rejoining him in Columbus. Daniel Norris might only last a day. In his return, we'll talk about that next. Josh Naylor's rehab a little bit more. And if we have time, we said we're going to get to some manager stuff here at some point. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. We'll see. Come back and find out. Let's try again Tuesday. You know what? I have a feeling, Jeff, that we are not going to see uh, 16 runs scored on Tuesday. So if you're out there betting, go bet the under. Because that will be Gavin Williams and Jorge Lo- and Jorge. Wow, not Jorge Lopez. That would be over sixteen runs. Uh, Pablo Lopez for the Twins. I was gonna say we're they're, they're going with their open. Oh, no, the they trade game. no. They still they still have Jorge. They still Lopez, have Jorge right? Lopez. No, no. They traded they traded Jorge to the the Marlins for uh, for Dylan Floro. That was their big deadline move. Anyway, oh, that's right. Listen. I forgot about that. I, I knew they <laughs> traded somebody. I was like, who did they trade? You can listen. Matt, to that and that and that your... that cost them again. Want to talk about the Twins being bad at trade? Like Twins were all in a year ago. That Jorge Lopez cost them, you know, Yimer, or Heimer Candelario, yeah, who's know. the better reliever now. And again, Tyler Molly hasn't pitched for them, I think, at all this year due to injury. And the <laughs> cost them Spencer Steer and Christian Encarnacio Strand. Uh, it is, I think there's value in knowing what your team is. And I'll just state that again. It's There's value in... Ask the Angels. Were, we are who we thought we are. Yeah. Ask the Angels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're feeling really good about what I mean, the, anyway. the Angels team have... Ooh, I, I wish you could trade first round picks just so Cleveland could have traded them something for their first round pick because they would have totally they would have done it. Their first right. round. Yeah. Uh, listen to Tuesday's game on your Sirius XM app. Search Guardians 
on the app. So Daniel Norris came back for a day. That was fun. Thanks for playing. Uh, chances are he's going to be let go. He he elected free agency after the Guardians DFA'd him last time, and he saw what was out there and was like, mm, all right, I'll go back to Columbus. And then he came back up because the Guardians needed an arm for the rest of the week to get them through and could even last a week because, uh, well, Curry wasn't very good, unfortunately, and uh, Norris was not much better when he came in. And luckily for for the Guardians, the Clippers are in Minnesota, too, right now. They are playing in St. Paul starting on Tuesday night. So help is an hour away, I think. I don't know how far St. Paul is from Minneapolis. But uh, um, I would not be surprised to see Hunter Gaddis, if, for Norris to be DFA'd, and again, and Hunter Gaddis brought back uh, for at least a couple of days until Cal Quantrill comes back on Friday. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. That's just they should. I think the Norris probably should have been done last year. I don't know what we were, what they were doing with that. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I've heard he's a nice guy. He's an interesting guy. He was a top prospect at one time, but same fate as Noah Syndergaard, who I believe I, they weren't teammates, but they were. They were both top prospects in the Blue Jays system at one time. Well, both traded the, for legitimate big leaguers. He was the guy. Uh, who was in the same draft, and I believe went in the second round as well, and was the the two big two big money guys in the second round of that draft were Daniel Norris and Dylan Howard. So it could always be worse. Dylan Har- Howard, worst second round pick in franchise history, never got out of the complex leagues. Yeah, yeah. got suspended for performance enhancing drugs, and then was out of baseball after getting nearly a two million dollars as a signing bonus. Well, the Guardians officially lost before we ended up finishing this podcast, so I guess that's a good thing. At least the game ended, 10-6 to loss. Uh, If you want to upside, Eli Morgan struck out four in an inning in the third. Didn't give up a run. Yeah, except for Curry and Norris, the bullpen, you know, pitched uh, three and pitched four innings. And And yeah, it was great. 99 has been pretty solid on his return. I know that's not what you're going to want to hear, but building up that trade value. They're showcasing him, Justin. They're showcasing him. I I don't have any. They're showcasing him. Oh, my God. I, did, I don't have any any response to to showcasing. Someone, someone tweeted me the other day saying they were showcasing Cal Quantrill at the end of the year. I was like, you need to stop. You just need to stop. Uh, uh, yeah, so I don't know how many games Josh Naylor is, is going to need in Ak- or, you know, to rehab. I would assume it's going to be a week's worth because he's probably going to play – well, okay. He won't be back before September first. Let's guarantee that. Uh, yeah. So, are are your September call ups essentially? Fry will Cal be Quantrill? back first. Mm, he's only played two games. I don't know. Maybe. So, uh, I don't want to think about it. So, I don't know if there's any. Is Fry? I feel like Fry is going to replace Haas, and they're going to keep Cam Gallagher. I just feel like that's what's going to happen. And David Fry is a useful player. I, you know, Eric Haas. I guess. I can't really throw my arms up too much about it. Like I like Eric Haas, he's, but they're both better. Cam Gallagher has no place with this team. Just go I ahead. I don't think make, he's going anywhere. I just don't make him, make him a coach and move on. Like that is, it's I time just, to make him a coach and move on. I, I get it. Cam he's Gallagher is going to start Wednesday in the series. Cam, you know Cam that, right? Gallagher, Cam Gallagher. I, I wish he could hit my body weight, but I mean, he can't even hit my kid's body weight and he's two years old. So his OPS it, is below just, 400. It's below 400. Like again, he, he makes, makes Austin, Austin hedges, hedges look like yes. Bay Ruth. It's yeah. it's bad. He has no business being on this team. Everyone who keeps saying that in the comments, you're right. I don't know what to tell you. He's you're and right. he's going to catch Wednesday because yeah. Naylor's going to play Tuesday, and then he needs a day off. Maybe if I feel like he should, it should be Eric Haas on Wednesday. But I think we both know it's going to be Kane Gallagher on Wednesday. Yeah. Breathe in. <laughs> we were going to talk about manager stuff. We are going to have a conversation about manager at some point this this coming up because I mean, obviously, it seems like this is going to be it for Tito. I don't know when they're going to make the announcement, but the way he's talking, it just it just seems like it's going to happen. We've kicked around ideas offline. You know, we've talked about the internals, the externals, who make who's interesting. I think we also talked about like what what. Uh, what traits do them, does a manager need to have? Like, at least for this team, I think you want to ask that question to figure out who is the best fit for this team. And I think the Guardians also value continuity. So if, you know, they just went out of their way to hire Chris Valeka a year ago and 
I should, shouldn't say out of the way because it was a long time coming for Tyvan Berkeley, but Valleca had it, you know, looked like it was good for a year, even though it was fluky and then um, hasn't been good this year. But I can't imagine they're going to let him go after one year, but do or two years. But, you know, does a new manager want to bring his own hitting coach in? Do they hire somebody who would be willing to keep Valleca? Do you have a marriage there? I don't know. There's a lot of things to consider, and I think we'll have a long conversation about that. Maybe Friday's episode, since there's no game on Thursday, but we'll get to it sometime this week because there's there's a lot to cover in terms of the managerial stuff. 100%. We want to thank you all for listening, rating, and reviewing, even when it's an off day, being with us. We appreciate all of you who are everydayers and part of the Lockdown Guardians crew. Oh, I think we keep both hitting it this at the same time. And uh, if you're watching YouTube, you get to see the bonus fun. So make sure to check that out. And as always, go, go, Guardians, go.